Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Work for Yourself as a PSW, uh, hosted by the Ontario PSW Association. My name is Miranda Ferrier, and I'm the CEO of the OPSWA, and I couldn't be more thrilled but to be joined uh, today with our OPSWA entrepreneur success story, uh, Kimberly Love. Um, you know, working for yourself in home care is something that comes up all the time uh, with the OPSWA from our members and just PSWs and even from the public. And I know we've done a couple of these in the past, uh, but thankfully um, we are now going to hear straight from the success story, straight from someone, a fellow PSW who knows what it takes to, uh, you know, bring ourselves up and into home care and because we truly believe at the OPSWA that private working PSWs are definitely a part of the future of home care in Ontario. So with that, um, please keep your questions uh, till the end of this presentation. Um, Kim, I'm sure we'll have time to answer all of your questions. Uh, from the back end, Ian De Silva, our Director of Operations and myself will be monitoring uh, questions and the chat. So feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, we're going to wait till the very end to ask the questions and answer all your questions that I'm sure you guys are going to have. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Miss Kim. Kim, take it away and welcome. Thanks, Miranda. Hi, everyone. As you heard, my name is Kim. I have been a PSW for 36 years. I have worked in a few provinces. And all your complaints are the same across the board. But what I decided to do was become my own boss. And uh, I have confidence in myself to do this. And what I want to do tonight is help you get to the same place I'm at as enjoying being a PSW again, working for yourself, taking care of people the way you know they should be taken care of and feeling like what you do matters. So Marianne, if you could go to the next slide. Too far. There you go. <laughs> How to start working for yourself is first you have to believe in yourself and your abilities and what you bring to the table. You know what your job is. You know how to care for people. Use that strength to further yourself in taking care of people and what you provide in their home for yourself and your family as well. And then you need to create a business motto as into uh, what do I want people to know about what I'm bringing. So my motto is I make people look good, feel good, and have a great day. Um, my value is that I'm going to treat your family like they're my family. And in doing that, that's what's going to make my business grow. You also need to um, make sure you know what you're offering. They know what you're offering, like light housekeeping, groceries, what it is you want to offer. And you really need to be hard and fast with that because sometimes you're going to get asked to do things that are a little bit out of the scope that you've already put in. And you might do it now and again, but eventually it becomes something they might ask you more and more. And you'll start feeling underappreciated again because you're doing things you said weren't part of what your, your jobs were. And most importantly, you need to sign up with OPSWA for the entrepreneur membership because there's no better buddy behind you, behind the doors, will being there for you, making sure that you have the insurance you need, you have your background check, that your code, you know, a code of conduct that you are going to follow throughout your business, that you need to stand to that standard. Um, and the insurance, everything that you pay for when you sign up as an entrepreneur with OPSWA is also available to go on your taxes. And we'll get to that later. <laughs> you need to create a workspace at home, a space that's dedicated to doing your invoices, doing your mileage, um, doing your scheduling, all of that sort of stuff. That is just your space for that. Because if you make it throughout your home, it's going to be everywhere. And you're never going to have a space that's just home. It's all going to be always about work. And you need to create that balance between home and space. So starting your office space is the best place to start. Figuring out free advertising and a business name and, and making sure you have a business card that's your card. You'll find if you're using like platforms like Vistaprint or, sorry, other one can't come to my mind right now. Um, 
if you're using one of their templates, you and another person could end up with having the same business cards. So try to, to make something that represents you. Um, make sure you go to the bank and open a business account so that you can have your personal records and your business records separate when it comes tax time, because trying to put everything together into one and everything coming up makes it much more confusing. You're going to pay more to have somebody do your taxes. And in doing that, you got to remember to keep good records, records of every receipt that could possibly use your account will help you know what, what you can use and what you can't. And the next thing is really to find a good accountant. Um, talk to them before you start your business on what you need. Um, and then finding clients and networking in your community as well um, as other associates in uh, PS, the OPSWA. So finding clients and uh, networking in your community is like going to your um, churches, grocery stores. All these places have bulletin boards, make flyers that can go on car windshields, hand out um, business cards to your family members because they're out in the community too, to your friends. And that's pretty much how you start it to just to give you an idea of what it's going to take to start a business. Can we go to the next slide? But first you have to believe in yourself and your abilities. The biggest reason most people are failing are because they're not investing in themselves and they're letting fear take over. And whatever you decide, when it comes to doing something, be it your own business or anything in life, you always have those two choices. Is it going to produce risk something for me? Am I going to have to pay something for this? The fear of the unknown and just believing that you know what you're doing. There's always going to be people who need your help, be it in the job you have now or be it in your future business. So your fears can be very hard to overcome I started this business three times. The first two times I had a client for a while and then the client died and I got scared how long it's gonna take and I just jumped right back into working into a nursing home. And then the second time, uh, again, didn't have a client for long, got scared, went back into home care. But this time I, I just knew I could do this. I knew what I was bringing was better than I was giving working in the environments I was working in, in retirement home, long-term care, home care. And I realized that whether I can or I can't, it's whichever one that I feed that's going to lead me to success or failure. Can you go to the next slide, Miranda, please? The best resource you have really is OPSWA. Um, I remember uh, when I started, I didn't know anything about OPSWA. And, uh, I jumped on and I looked to see what it was. I decided this was actually a very good thing. I could get all these things, my code of conduct, my back checks. I was getting insurance. And when I signed up and I ended up calling and speaking to them, they were so helpful that I thought, oh, I feel like I had somebody in my corner that I wasn't completely alone because they were always there to answer. I've never had an issue not finding out something. It may take a day or two because they're busy, but they've always gotten back to me. They also advertise when you sign up for you. So I have, sometimes I have clients I can't take on. I don't have time. My first resource is, so I don't know if you've ever heard of the Ontario PSW Association, but they have a website and they have a list of other private PSWs. So I'm sending people out to you as well because we are our biggest resources in networking when you're working on your own. Can I go to the next slide, please? Now, to, you don't have to register a name if you are using your name in your business, like examples there, Judy's Loving Touch Home Care. But if you decide you want a name that's just about your business, then you do, can we go to the next slide? You do have to go online and do a name search. And every time you do a name search, it costs you $5. When you find a name that's yours, it will cost you $80 to own that name for five years. 
then once you have your name, you got to create that email, get that email that's going to be just for your business. Um, sometimes people have been using them and you have to take, get creative with your business name is what I'm saying. Sorry if I'm talking too fast. Um, setting up your office is important. I think I, I said that. I think I repeated myself there. Sorry. Having that separate space is very important to keeping things organized. Like at the beginning of every year, I take 12 folders. I put every month on it and every month sits up there and I put in all my receipts, all my invoices, my bank statements, everything goes in that file. And then I put it away. And at the end of the year, I take it to my accountant and everything is in there. And if anything that doesn't get put on, he lets me know that that's not part of, but you know, there's so many other things that you can um, use on your taxes that talking to an accountant is very important. You need to create an invoice and a mileage form so that at the end of the month or in whenever you decide you're going to be getting paid, um, you have your invoices in there and your mileage is for using your vehicle. You get a percentage back again in your taxes <laughs> for your gas, your maintenance, um, if you're leasing your vehicle, stuff like that. And as I already had stated before, opening that business account and keeping your personal stuff from your business stuff and you would pay yourself. So you leave X amount of dollars in your business account and then you pay yourself through like an e-transfer to your personal account to pay your bills. But you can also set up your bills to be paid through your business. And anything you send yourself off is just your pay. But again, when talking to an accountant, you will understand that a little bit better than I can explain. Next slide. So creating a business motto, the value that helps people know who you are and what your business stands for. As I stated before, my motto is my job is to make somebody look good, feel good, and just have a great day. My value is to provide excellent client-centered care to support their daily living while keeping them at home and living their life to the fullest. And just thinking of me as a friend, don't wear uniforms. I am an attachment of that person. So when we're out and we're doing stuff, nobody thinks this is a person who needs help. I could be their granddaughter, their daughter, whatever it is. And it gives, makes them feel so much better. Getting liability insurance. I just saw, I just saw that question. Opsala has that for you in your entrepreneur membership. The only extra insurance besides that, that you may need is if you're willing to drive your client around in your car, you will need to have extra insurance for that. No doubt about it. So how to find clients. I myself, I went to all the grocery stores. I made a flyer and I hung them up where I could. And I hung up on bulletin boards and, and malls where I know that seniors frequent. I'm lucky enough that I've been in, the, in this for a long time that I know a lot of people. And I gave out cards to friends and family. And one of my first clients actually came from one of my flyers in the grocery store. Um, she'd seen it. She didn't have a cell phone, but I had kept cards in there. And in the, in the cards, I had put above that, if this is empty and you have a cell phone, take a picture and all the information you need to reach me is on here. And so somebody else who was with her driving her took the picture and she called me. She goes, I take a picture. <laughs> and that's how that started. It's really getting out and putting yourself out there. Next slide. So this is what my flyer is. It doesn't completely look like this, but it does give an idea of um, what I provide. Personal care, light housekeeping, prep, groceries, companionship, just a friendly visit, respite care. It's all there, including my information. So that, as I say, if there's nothing in the little envelope you put attached to it, people can take a picture or just put that up without wasting your cards. 
Next slide. At the, as I said, that bottom of my flyers, I created that and where I put them. And the others like Kijiji, I have an ad that I continually run there and I get contacted still all the time for. I have a page on Facebook. There's a bunch of different apps for your, your areas like neighborhood app. Um, you can go to LinkedIn. Um, your small business center as well. Um, we'll put flyers up or um, keep pins and of a certain amount of your cards so that somebody coming and going possibly may need somebody who does what you do. Um, reaching out to other PSWs, you know, that uh, are working in the nursing homes or working in the homes and have family members or friends who whose family members need help is a, is a great way. Um, coffee shops even Tim Hortons, they have those little newspapers that they're there and I'll always like stuff some of my business cards in there. And bouncing your ideas off. So I'm not big into talking about the tax part of it because not sure what you're looking to do with your business. So the first part of the CRA information explains to you what is exempt from having to pay HST and GST. Um, you can make up to $30,000 before paying taxes. And there, I'm really not going to say much more on that because as I said, it's each, if you're going to keep the job you have and do the, your business, that's two separate things. And to start these businesses and you don't have any clients lined up yet, I would say, keep the job you have, put your name out there and start building. Could be somebody who you only take on for an hour a day or set yourself a bare minimum that yes, I provide these services. I, I have a minimum of two hours. I don't just take somebody for an hour, but that is about it. And I know there's a lot of questions. So a little nervous. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, um, we do have quite a bit of questions. Let me just get our bearings here right now. Um, this one person asked, do you have any recommendations for the car insurance if you want to drive your clients? I'm having an issue finding an insurance company. Um, not really, because insurance has changed so much, even in the last three years, like you're... I, I just recently noticed that I've been paying an extra $60 every year. And I'm like, well, why is this? And it's because I take my clients. So it's just my benefit has to increase like that. You're not going to get around having to pay that, but you can, all, I know it sounds redundant, but it can go on your taxes. So yes, you're paying that, but that is like your, that's probably going to be your biggest business expense. You're not going to be a large company. You're not going to have huge overhead. And the more you are able to put into your taxes that are absolutely related to your business, then the more refund you will get. That much I can say. True. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot you can write off when you, when you own your own business and it's a good thing. Definitely a good thing. So what would be the going rate be? We knew this question was going to come up. Can well, we talk have no about problem it? with this question? That's not, I'm, that's why I kind of rushed through the other part because I, I really want to get to the questions. I would yeah. say baseline $25 an hour. Maximum, if you're doing a lot, I would say 35. Well, I think it depends on the level of care, right? Yeah. And the thing is, is that great, you can go out and you start your own business. But if you look at it like, you're working four hours at $25 an hour. That's your $25 up until $30,000. And four hours, that's a hundred bucks. In four hours, you made a hundred bucks. What are you making at your job right now in eight hours after taxes? Oh, well, yeah. Right? So working for yourself has its benefits. But like I said, if you're going to start this and you have nobody lined up, keep the job you have. Start lining up clients. Go down to part-time. Go down to casual. You got to remember, you're also, when you give that up, I'm not telling you not to give it up, you're giving up your benefits and eventually you'll have to pay for those yourself as well. 
which again is a good tax write-off. <laughs> all about that isn't it a lot of it is when it comes so, to uh, running your own business it really is about what you can write off because it's if you can't get something back besides what you're doing and what it gives you why are people going to do it exactly exactly we got lots of questions pouring in right now so it says is it true that the minimum liability for using your car insurance is two million i don't know i don't that one unfortunately we don't have the answer <laughs> yeah that would be like doing some research from calling different um insurance companies which you would do normally if you were just starting to insure a car anyway if you've never had it you would call around and, and investigate who's got the better deal who's got the better rate can i bundle this with my home and auto insurance in any way shape or form and yeah. still get a discount um, so it says here too, and this one I'm probably going to answer. It says, before I start, do I need some kind of certification apart from, or no, you can answer this apart from the, uh, PSW certificate. No, no, nope. do not. No, no. There are people out there that are doing what we can be doing and have nothing. So when these elderly people get to a point where they need care, they're probably going to be bedridden or not have enough money left to have somebody come in and help them. And that's where I was going to get at with the um, charging people. If you have a client that you know may be around for quite some time, and we don't, none of us know how long we're going to be here, so be it old, young, or whatever, um, charging them $25 an hour keeps your longevity with that client, keeps you guaranteed that you they have the money to pay you for a longer distance and you have time to find other clients, you know, there's one other thing I wanted to mention was you really got to create boundaries for yourself. This is very easy to start doing this and going, Oh my God, I am making such good money, but I'm working, 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 working. And now I'm working seven days a week. And for me, I'm a workaholic. I had to seriously talk to myself and say, I am not working Sundays, but if it gets to a point, which it did through COVID, I'll work every other Sunday and Saturday. Because you have to, you know, make an income, but keep, keep your boundaries. You've really got to set hard and fast rules for yourself or you will burn out and not go back to your old job and not continue with this job. And I don't really feel like this is even a job. I, I get to go and do what we all want to do and spend time with these people, make them feel valued, just like you feel valued because they're so appreciative that you're there. Exactly. Exactly. Beautifully said. Uh, next question is, what if we want to hire other PSWs? What will we charge the clients? So that's far different than anything I would ever want to do. So I really can't answer that for you because I never want to make money off another PSW's back ever. I know what we all go through. I know what every single one of us bring to the table. I will help people get to a point where they can do this on their own and have a create a network for myself. Mm -hmm. of PSWs that if when I got married I knew somebody who could pick up some hours so I was off for a week and she covered for me families are it's when you come in like this as a private person and they know that you're a one-person show they know that it's not your responsibility to cover for yourself they need to find somebody they need to step up or they need to find somebody else it is perfectly fantastic to go well I have some other PSWs in my network that may be able to help out and to take some more stress off of them. You know, can I say something, Kim? We actually have another really successful entrepreneurial uh, group, shall I say. Um, I believe they're down near you, but they're a group of, and this is another way to do it instead of being like an agency where you have to pay, you know, all those fees for employees and this and that. And that's a lot of work. That's a lot of undertaking. Um, and, but this group of, I believe it's like four or five women, uh, all PSWs, they all got their own individual entrepreneurial membership through the OPSWA and they all work with clients and they bounce around with clients with each other. So if someone is sick, another person takes over from there and another person, whatever. So it's very similar to what you're saying, except these individuals all formed one home care company and they all work under that home care company and that's their prerogative. But um, that's one other option. I hope that answers that question. 
for I know somebody else. Office. He's not a yeah. PSW, and he yeah. he has a network, but he charges them five dollars an hour off of what he charges the client. Uh, so every, yeah. every hour you work, he's making five dollars off you. You mm-hmm. want to run a business where you're hiring people and you're responsible for their behavior, and they are responsible for upholding your name. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you'd go talk to somebody in in those smaller businesses that are just start that that do home care. Don't go to a big one because they don't want to talk to you because <laughs> you're the competition. But go to a smaller one and just you know say just interested and in how whatever like you you can figure it out. I don't know exactly what you want to do, but good luck to you. You know what? But here's here's what we're saying though, Kim, is the sky's the limit. With home yeah. care right now, guys, they, they call it the wild, wild west for good reason. Because right now, this is an opportunity for PSWs to step up and do and become the be all end all in home care in Ontario. I truly believe that um that's a it's a great opportunity for PSWs. Um talk- go ahead. Like, when you yeah. talk to a senior, the first thing they say is, I want to stay in my home. You're doing that for them. And there's no greater gift to give them than to have that one-on-one time from somebody who knows what they're doing, making them and their families feel comfortable and going home feeling satisfied that, you know what, I did the best I could for this, these people I take care of today. Nobody, everybody had a good day. I had a good day and I have a lot still to bring home to my family instead of, oh, I gotta get up at six and do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the next question is, and I'm trying to get through all your questions, guys, so just bear with me for a second. So what about when clients ask for receipts? That's one of the questions I can't. That's your invoice. Yeah. So I have an invoice. I have one client that I get, I get paid weekly from. The other one I got paid biweekly from. And I make a re- uh, invoice for them. Any receipts because I have a business account. I have a business credit card. So if I buy their groceries before I come there, I put all of that on my invoice. I photocopy, not photo, I scan their receipts and email it with their invoice. We do e-transfer because once that they've received my email and I get paid, they've got a record, I've got a record. There you go. Yeah. And then here too, this is another really good question from Patricia. Patricia says, my fear is taking on clients when getting sick and needing time off. What do you do then? Do you have a backup? Yes, that's the network. That's your yeah. other people. That's you going on to the Opla, Opla, Opswa, um, Facebook page or talking to Miranda or Ian or sending Debbie or somebody an email saying, listen, I'm looking for somebody. Do you know anybody directly in my area? Because it does give you a little more comfort knowing that it came from them instead of like, hmm, I wonder what this person's like. I wonder what that person's like. I don't know if I'd be okay with giving up my client. Are they going to try to take my client? <laughs> It's a real fear, right? It's, it's an actual yeah. fear. And, but when you're ops, what you're ops, what you're ops, what? So, you know, you got yourself a PSW exactly. with insurance and everything else. No, that's a really great, great question. And you're doing this me. for so long and in so many areas. I have, if I got a call from somebody in Hanover the other day and the lady has spoken to me about a year ago. She goes, why does your name sound familiar? And I explained, I remember you. This is why. And she's like, that's amazing. But do you know anybody up here in Hanover yet? <laughs> And I'm like, did you go on the website? She goes, I am 80 years old. I don't know how to work a website. Uh, so you know I, what? It's the truth. It is. And it's, there's a lot of people who don't have family, right? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. So I called somebody I know up in the Walkerton. They went over, helped her out. She's getting the help actually she needs from, I don't know what it's called anymore, the Lynn CCAC, whatever you want to call it here. And she's getting the help. She's been looking for these answers for a dang year. <laughs> well, you know what? That's the issue, though. And and we see it every day at the Opswa, right? We have family members and 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 clients that 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 call the association, approach the association with questions because once you hit that government website, yeah, <laughs> good luck. You're lost in the midst of Alice in Wonderland, apparently. I think that's another resource too, though, is there's a lot of people getting that um, self care funding. So I would call oh, direct, them. direct care. Yeah. Direct direct care. Care. Um, call them, say, I am, have my own business. I'm looking for some clients. Is there anybody you know who may need a new PSW? Because yeah. your insurance is, it used to be a hassle, but now it's all corrected and everything you do with OPSWA is good with them. 
Well, I, it's, you know what? It was a battle to get you guys in the door, but I'm really glad that you guys are. And I should also just mention that the entrepreneurial membership does cover the family managed uh, home care insurance that's required by the Ministry of Health in order to work with direct pay clients. So what I mean by that is these are individuals that receive money through the government uh, in order to hire someone directly. So you can work with those individuals now as an OPSWA entrepreneurial member. So just FYI. So next question, and I think this one's kind of interesting actually, is I work for myself and I'm struggling with clientele, like people passing and transitioning into long-term care. I'm contemplating on subcontracting with other small support uh, businesses. What are your thoughts on that? Contracting with other businesses, that that's great. Like if you're going to keep working for yourself, sometimes you have to take a step back and do those other things. Like I started my business four months before COVID hit. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? But I made it. I was maybe only making 18000 a year total, but I made it. And I got to the other side and it's been like incredible. But people are going to die. And you have to make sure that you have a plan for yourself because that's the scarier part. What if I, what happens when my clients are dead and I don't have anybody and just keep working forward. If you have to take a step back, it's okay. And that's mm -hmm. the best thing about being a PSW or healthcare aid. If there's people from across Canada right now on this, we can do this job anywhere and we are always going to be needed. Uh -huh. So yeah, sure. You got people feel like um, I'm replaceable because there's so many of us out there. You aren't replaceable to the people you care for in those places, and you're not replaceable to the people you care for at home, uh -huh. in their homes. This is where you get to stand out and go. This is how this should be. This is how this always should have been. That's really well said. Thank you. Okay, we got another one here, and I know he's been dying for me to ask this. Like I keep skipping it. Sorry, Gary. Uh, for your Facebook page, do you buy ads and, and do you recommend it? Nope. I have my page out there. I get people who like it or whatever. Um, I don't find that Facebook is the greatest. It's still on there. It's very difficult to get something off of Facebook. Um, but I, if somebody doesn't have my information on them they can just say oh well, she's got this on her facebook and they and this is just like family and friends and then my information's there and they go they'll copy it down or they'll share the link or whatever i'm not a big fan of it um i don't really feel like you should have to pay to advertise because we're everywhere and there's places everywhere people you may feel like you have a lot of people in your area doing this who could be doing this and you might be overstepping anybody who can't see that you're you're a team and take yours down or whatever that's on them just keep keep going forward with this you will make it we all will make it because we do this for a reason amen to that um okay um and poor heather i'm sorry heather you've posted this like three times what area do you work in <laughs> i work in the london area only i have um emergency cases going to St. Thomas or, or something just to cover. Which I'm going to bring up in a minute, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a, a lot of friends that have family members outside or that I've taken care of just to help out the family. But I prefer to stay in my area because it costs, ends up costing more. And how am I going to get from here to there? And if it's, it gets to be too much. You can plan it. You own your own business. You own your yeah. own time. So you can plan it that better that way. As no, opposed no, to going to Timbuktu. Yeah. If you live in an apartment building, you've got free advertisement right there in your front lobby by the mail. I would go into retirement homes and leave my business cards by the mail so that, oh, I oh, wonder what this is. Right. So it's all about what, how you think outside of the box. Yeah. Yeah. It's I just want to point out. I just want to point out that many people do come to the OPSWA for entrepreneurial PSWs. And I just have to give a shout out to Kim on this one. I might embarrass her a little bit, but there was a long time ago uh, when she was first starting out that we actually received a phone call from a former minister uh, um, of the Ontario legislature who required immediate assistance for his ailing father. And uh, Kim stepped up 
literally that night I called her at seven. She was at their place at nine. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, there's, that's also opportunities from the office. So I mean, an entrepreneurial PSWs is we have families that reach out to us all the time and they don't know they can hire private working PSWs. That's another thing is they don't realize they can actually go directly to the personal support workers. So it's becoming a very popular conversation uh, on all levels. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good time to get going on this. So the next question real quick is what is the going rate for overnights, sleep shift and awake shift? So I would say if, if it's a sleep shift, I would, and it's, if it's eight hours, I would say 150 because you're, you're not doing anything. Um, if you have to be awake, I would say 225. I think that that's pretty fair because you're not going to be doing something the whole eight to 12 hours that you're there, but you are there. You need to be awake. And if you're, and you know, sometimes families We'll say, oh, well, this is what we're going to offer. And it's actually better than what you would have said. It it just depends. Okay. That's good to, yeah. It's, I remember when I did it really comes down to you. Like if you don't have an other client in the morning and you can then stay awake all night, you know, you, you, everybody's got a conscience. If you're going to charge somebody that's going to make you something that's going to make you feel uncomfortable, then maybe I would second guess charging them that. Yeah. Okay. Mm, next question. <laughs> I think I have to answer this one actually. <laughs> do you recommend, do you recommend making a written contract with your clients? We can both agree and say yes on that front. Um, can OPSWA help drafting one or provide a template? So yes, we do. So actually when you become an entrepreneurial member with the association, you actually receive an entrepreneurial package straight from our very own Mr. Ian De Silva. And we sets up a phone call with you or a Zoom to talk about what you need out of your business and what you see happening for yourself. We then assist you by posting your logo or your business card, as Kim said earlier, on our website. Um, we have a lot of entrepreneurial PSWs. And then when we get phone calls or email inquiries from families, which we do on the daily, uh, we direct them to specific, we will name out which PSWs are in which region. So um, yes, answer your question. Short answer is yes, we do do that for you, as well as also having a template for a care plan as well. And, and the Small Business Center will help you with that too. If you are finding you're not getting exactly what you're looking for, I'm telling you, your Small Business Center is amazing. They have so many free classes um, and classes that do cost money, but they have CRA members come in and speak to you about your taxes. They have reputable accountant companies come in and talk to you about your taxes. How to do proper good bookkeeping, how to advertise. And 90% of that is free. They do um, every six months here anyway, they were doing a meet and greet. So all kinds of new businesses come and you hand out cards and you meet people and there's a meal put on for you. And it's a way to network. Yeah. Yeah. In your own communities. Absolutely. Which is yeah. really, really, really important. So I keep getting asked questions about, can we introduce our insurance company for liability insurance? The insurance is through the membership with the OPSWA. So um, it's not a separate thing that you get and then you get membership it's literally embedded into the different levels uh, we have many different membership i would say many but four or five different memberships with the association for different aspects of psw life um and it's all available on our website which i'm sure ian if he's listening can uh, type it into the bar. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ian. Um, so he type it in so that we can give you guys that information. I also have the point as well, we have a lot of international nurses uh, that are on here as well. And if you need information regarding working for yourself as a PSW in home care, as a grandfather, grandfathered um, a member of OPSWA, you can also reach out to Ian as well. And um, the cost for membership is a it's there's two different memberships, but I believe for entrepreneurial, I don't want to say it because I don't remember. Uh, Ian, do you know? Yeah, one second, I'll pull it up okay. Okay. off the top well, of my head. If I may, entrepreneurial, you can run it as low as $30 a month, um, for a 12 month contract, uh, or you can pay up front for about I think it's 350 a year. 
Um, believe it or not, my page is not loading. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a, a loading issue here. Nothing is working for me. One second. Awesome. But it is $30 a month, which is extremely afford affordable. We believe affordable if you want to start your own business and have, I believe it's $3 million uh, insurance coverage. Um, I can't believe we don't know this off the top of our it's heads. 300, it's $300 a year um, or you pay $30 a month. So it is cheaper to go with the annual. So that's, that, that is exactly what it is. It's 300 per year. That includes all your insurance, the advertising unlimited, everything that, uh, uh, Miss Love has said this evening is included at that membership. So we we help out our entrepreneurs a lot. We help out all of our PSWs. Actually, I don't want to just say that's all we do is help out our PS. Well, that's what you do. That's why you're called Opswa. Yeah, um, <laughs> and I'll add to that is that um, I totally just lost my train of thought. Lose, oh, that's okay. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. So trust me. Um, what he just said, you just missed what he just said right now. The entrepreneurial membership with the Ontario PSW Association is $30 a month or it's $300 a year. It's actually cheaper to go uh, just yearly, pay annually. But please also remember that this insurance is a tax deduction on your income tax. So you literally get almost all of your money back. <laughs> it's like a cycle. Uh, it's You get almost all your money back and then you rejoin again, get your money back again. So it's basically just you're repocketing it every time you pay it out uh, when you do your taxes. And um, regarding the insurance, oh, the, the insurance is a $3 million coverage, I believe for entrepreneur, uh, but it's also 54. Is it four now? I believe it's four now. I just I think, renewed in October. Oh, you know what's crazy is we just changed insurance brokers. So please, I apologize. Uh, we, we, and we upped stuff for you guys. So we didn't change any of the pricing. None of the prices changed, but we upped how much insurance um, our PSWs received um, because it's important uh, that you guys have what you need in order to be successful and that you're safe at the end of the day because that insurance, that's an important factor. And that's and what it's actually, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I do not take people into my network of other PSWs that I will bring in it. And I, I am not paid by Opso for this at all. I just firmly believe in them. We're surprised. If you're not a member of them and you're not covered and you don't follow a code of conduct, I can't in good conscience bring you in on my network because you're not just carrying my name in there with nothing behind you and mess up. I'm not taking responsibility for you. I, if I know you're a member and you're insured and you follow that code of conduct, I will add you to my network every time. And you know what? We have a lot. Um, we have a lot of PSWs that do that. Um, we have a bunch of entrepreneurial PSWs that work with other PSWs like you, Kim, and they only take on ops with PSWs as well. It's mandatory if they want to work together. And it's it is not just because of the insurance, but that's a really big, important factor because you guys never say never. Right. We don't get car insurance thinking, yeah, I'm going to go out right now and I'm going to rear end someone in the Timmy's parking lot. We don't expect things to happen. So never say never. Uh, and that's why we have the professional liability insurance because it protects you. But there's also, I believe, 50,000 abuse coverage as well. Um, and there's like, so basically what happens with this insurance, guys, just FYI, if you get charged or you get accused and you need to obtain legal counsel, which can be very, very, very expensive, um, this insurance will cover it. So you don't have to get out a second mortgage. You don't have to lose your home. You don't have to lose anything that you own um, in order to defend yourself uh, from accusations. Uh, we had a PSW, because I do expert talking sometimes at, at court for different lawyers. And there was a PSW that was charged with, um, I believe it was abuse and from long-term care though. But similar situation is that someone had witnessed the abuse. Turns out at the end of the day, she was completely innocent of all charges. And this was after eight months through court and trial. And uh, her entire family was wiped out because she was not an OPSWA member. She didn't have any insurance coverage. So when we say it, we're not just saying it. Uh, it's not a spiel to sell it. It's to protect you guys. Um, as soon as I found out about this years ago, I thought, Dude, we got to have it. I carry it too. And I don't work as an active PSW anymore. So, you know, it's really important that you guys have it. At the end of the day, your biggest protection is protector is yourself. Yeah. If you don't protect yourself financially that way, um, 
and what, whatever it is you're going to do, wherever it is you're going to work, the end of, you're the one in the end is going to pay and nobody else is going to step up to help you with that. And Opso has always been there to answer anything or any problem I had. And sometimes I just need to vent because sometimes dealing with families can be rather difficult. Yeah. And only another PSW can understand that. Yeah. And out of Opso, just uh, we're all PSWs here, short of Ian. He's our honorary PSW. But everyone that works for the association are personal support workers. Some are still working in the field. Some are not. So, um, you know, takes a PSW to know a PSW. So that's what we always say. I should also mention, though, really quick, Kim, sorry. You don't need uh, the entrepreneur membership if you're just starting out as a PSW uh, working it for yourself in home care. Okay. So if you're just a regular member and you have the $2 million or even the $1 million from our last year's membership, uh, you're fully covered. You're okay. If you have like one client, maybe trying to find another client, but once you start kind of breaching into like the two, three, four going up, then you're going to need to up your uh, insurance. Cause someone had asked, how do you switch? to entrepreneur, we definitely can switch you. And that would be something that you would have to reach out to the association HR department directly, and they can bring you through the process and make it happen. Absolutely. So, and I would say if you have just graduated um, and have never worked in home care, go work in home care mm -hmm. Don't go out and try and start your business because there is different critical thinking that you have yet to, to do in this job. And I'm not saying you're not going to be good at home care, but without that kind of understanding of what it takes, you're not going to enjoy it. You're not, it's, it's too much for you to take on and think, okay, what am I supposed to do here? I'm, you're more trained to, to be institutionalized. Hey, that's me. It's not me. <laughs> no, that's me. I worked only, I, I loved my home care people, but I, I couldn't do home care and, and don't feel bad if you can't. Like some, yep. some people there's PSWs that like I thrived in the long-term care and hospital settings. That was my jam as a PSW home care. I didn't mind it, but I'm more of a real busy body and I need to continue being busy as I'm sure that doesn't surprise anyone, but you know, like Kim, you're better in home care, right? Like I'm actually, no, I excel in all of it. I just yeah. prefer at this point in my life, I prefer giving people the care that I want when I'm that age yeah, and the respect that I want when I'm that age. I don't, we all, none of us who work in this ever want to be institutionalized in any way, shape or form. No, I, I think my parents have promised I won't get, I won't put them in home either. I think all of our parents have, we have promises <laughs> from us for that. <laughs> I think so. Um, let me see here. Wow. You guys are just loving this. If you want to start your own home care company, it's as easy as ABC. A lot of you guys have your own communities that you can reach out into and just start working as a PSW privately. Um, Believe in yourself. Yeah. Honestly, that's what it takes. Believing in yourself that you are going to do this. Yeah. I suffer from OCD and I'm bipolar. And that's what made me not do this years ago when I started the first time. But this time there was no, no turning back. I was not going to work in these places anymore. I literally, the last facility I worked in, took my uniform off and walked out in my underwear and t-shirt because I couldn't take their shit anymore. Part of my language. <laughs> I didn't mean to, <laughs> but That's I just couldn't okay. do it. I was one, and I get it. I know all your stories are the same. I was 30, one person for 30 people. And I got told I was insubordinate because I asked for help. <laughs> Well, then they wanted to write me up. I said, no, I took my uniform off and I walked out. Done. You know, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, we hear it all the time, right? And, it, and instead of, you know, throwing in the towel, and I commend you, Kim, you said enough is enough and I'm going to take control of my career as a PSW. Yeah. And, and that's what you did. And I think that's what a lot of these PSWs here on this call today are thinking is how how do I... I mean, you don't become a PSW, right, for the money. I mean, really, yep. at the end of the you're day, you're never going to be don't. rich being a PSW. You're never going to be rich as a PSW. But, but you I'll tell you a... this. Yeah. All the girls, and there's about six of them that I've helped in my area start, say to me, I wish I would have done this earlier. I have no debt. I can go on vacations. I say how long I work. I say who I take on. And if it doesn't work and the rapport isn't there, I don't have to do it. 
I am the boss. That it really, honestly, it's that it really is easier than it, you're than you're all feeling inside. If you're still afraid to start, just start. Just What's start. the worst that can happen? You go back to working and, and you start again. Never stop trying. That's how I quit smoking. Never stop yeah. trying to quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great to have that motto though. And you're right. You just, they just, you guys have to just believe in yourselves and just, I know a lot of, a lot of PSWs were very downtrodden and you guys are beaten up a lot and burn out because of everything that has occurred, especially over the last four years of COVID. I know I said the terrible C word, but alas, here we are. Um, and, but you guys are all in your own rights, your survivors. And I think that doing home care and, and when I tell you guys, the need is beyond long-term care. Yes, there's a desperate need in long-term care for PSWs, but there's an even more desperate need in home care. People are literally going without care period, because there is no PSWs that are able to give the care, which I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that on this call as well. So going and working for yourself in the beginning, you're going to fumble, but that's why Kim, not with us asking, has been promoting the Oswa Entrepreneurial Membership because we will hold your hand. We will help you. We will assist you. That is what we are here for. I don't just, I don't just, I have to say, I don't just tell people about Oswa. I have friends across Canada. So Canadian support workers, it's all of it because this should have been out a long time ago. This should have been done a long time ago. It really, honestly. No, and just to answer uh, Winnie, yeah, no, the insurance that we have with our new brokers does not include auto insurance. Um, it will start including discounts on auto insurance, hopefully in the new year. Um, but because we worked on this great big policy for you guys and gave you guys far more liability insurance, we just have to get there. Um, but I'll definitely poke them. <laughs> let them know that people want to have that discount on car and home insurance. So I'll let them know. Um, you're welcome. So here, let me see. Uh, we have about eight minutes left of this webinar, guys. I know we could honestly keep Kim all night and asking <laughs> her questions about how to start your own home care company. Um, I'm just going to answer one really quick that has nothing to do with you. Uh, PSW student finishing at the end of January. Can I get the regular membership now? Um, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to actually complete the program and have a letter of completion from your school. And if you just have the letter, you don't even need your certificate, just the letter. And you shoot that into us. And yes, you can join as a regular member. I hope that answered your question. Um, here's one for you, I think that we didn't touch on, which I think is important, is what kind of record keeping do you keep for your clients? Record keeping as in what I do for them? Or well, like, yeah, kind of, I guess like care plan, kind of maybe. I and think that varies. Yeah. That varies because there is a program that you can get called care. Is it care.com? It's not care.com where you can go and put your name on there and I provide service to seniors. Um, I have to look it up again, but it provides you with a platform that's not Facebook or an open messenger thing and you're texting. It's private. It shows who's working when um, you put your notes in there and each person can read it. Who has the login information, their personal login, because it's one person hosts it. They, the family hosts it. They give out the information, but I still find that a lot of my families prefer chats that way more people can be in on it the other psws that come they may you may not be friends with them you may not know them from anywhere else knowing what they did instead of keeping a book in the home which is another option keeping a book in a home and each person after what's ever gone on in the day you know that could or be where you can all that stuff but uh, old school with the handwriting in the school. <laughs> yeah, but I find a lot of my clients' families really want to be hands-on and, and they don't come to the house every day. Mm -hmm. So this way, at the end of your shift, you type in what went on that day, what you did, meds, blah, 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 blah. And that that's it's really that simple. It's We, yeah. we really do in our minds make it harder than it is. I, oh. I, I'm, I'm true to the fact of that. <laughs> Well, you know what it goes through my head when I think about communication books is I think no glittered pens, no name calling and no smiley faces. 
Uh, you guys always have to remember that these communication books, regardless if it's typed, if it's written, this is legal documentation. Yep. So it can be used uh, yep. in insurance claims. It can be used in, in court cases. So always remember that, that uh, don't be doing that. <laughs> if you find that family members are doing that to each other, mm -hmm. reiterate to them what that is for. <laughs> You're Sometimes a professional. You really yeah. You, yeah, you guys are the professional PSWs. It's your job to you. care. You you're, not, you're not just caring for that person. You're, the family is involved more so than you would get working with a bigger company or um, in a home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're we want to see that. We want families involved with their family members. And it's we see too much of nobody. And I find that when they're in their own home, you actually really do get a little bit more than you do in the homes. Not a lot, but you do get more. Well, you have to deal with the, you're dealing with the client and then now you're dealing with the client's family as well because you're dealing with pay and That's you're dealing with, it's different <laughs> hats, right? You suddenly become, but hey, if the PSW is anything, we are multitaskers. So I think that it's definitely something that PSWs can, uh, let me just answer this last question. Just not to freak out the PSWs here, but Mary just asked me a really good question on here. How many PSWs get sued? Um, I can put it as more than you would think. Because remember, you can get sued. You can be named in a class action suit. That's in long-term care homes or retirement homes, right? And yes, it is up to your employer to protect you. However, they're not, the lawyer isn't working for you. Their lawyer will be working for them. And that's why it's important that you have liability insurance no matter where you work. Now in home care, not as much. We haven't heard of as much in home care. It's more so in the bigger institutions that you're hearing about the, the lawsuits. But I would still, PSWs could, you know, you can get, they can sue you for like, you're giving grandpa a bath and grandpa falls by accident, right? They can sue you for that. So, you know, or um, grandma's bracelet goes missing, but grandma has dementia and she put it somewhere else, but of course blames the PSW or says something about that. So the family goes to, you know, to charge you with it or whatever, and you get sued or you get charged or whatever it is. Right. So like I always say, never say never because you yeah. never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, Okay, so we have next to no minutes left. We've got three minutes left on the clock here. And I just think that I just want to say, um, Kim, you're a godsend. You do wonderful work uh, as a PSW in the community. I think it's very, uh, thank you so much for doing this uh, for the Ops One, for everyone who came out here today. Um, it was very, very informative happy to have you come do another. I think so would they um, at this point. <laughs> well, let me just say this. I know that I put out there that my information is on the wipes on your website. And that's great if you want to reach out to me, but please make sure that you put that you are an OPSO member and you're not somebody looking for care <laughs> because it just gets confusing because I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to get a few emails. And I just want you to know that if I don't get back to you right away, first I'm running my business, then I can help you. And remember, you have to also come to us. Yep. So, and if it's so, and we're set up to take all your emails and stuff. Go we're down. set up. <laughs> so come to us. And if you have questions for Kim, I mean, we are happy to send your email to Kim uh, so that she can answer it. Um, you're getting a whole ton of thank yous are coming through well, in the chat right being now. Here. I appreciate, I'm glad there's more people out there who want to do this. And, and honestly, believe in yourself. That's really all I can say is it's, the hardest thing to do in the whole world is to believe in ourselves and our confidence and what we bring to the table. We, we downplay that so much, but as PSWs, we are in need. We bring something to everybody's life that we, we take care of and they bring something to ours. Absolutely. Like I always say, PSWs own personal care. Be proud of that. Not just anybody can do your job. Sorry. So, you know, be proud of what you guys do. Uh, and with that, we will be posting this just for you guys who have so many questions and you maybe didn't hear everything or you weren't writing fast enough. We did record this session and it will be on YouTube tomorrow. So we will, of course, post it on our social media platforms on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. I don't think it goes on Instagram. I'm, I'm not that person. So look for it. Um, and if you would like it, feel free to email us as well. Um, and with that, 
Kim, have a wonderful night. Thank everyone you. Else, Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Yeah, and Ops out, guys. Take care.